Concorde was the first supersonic passenger carrying commercial airplane built jointly by aircraft manufacturers in Great Britain and France. Twenty aircrafts were built, including six prototypes and development aircraft. Air France and British Airways were the only airlines to purchase and fly Concorde. The Concorde made its first transatlantic crossing on September 26, 1973, and it inaugurated the world's first scheduled supersonic passenger service on January 21, 1976. Financial losses led both airlines to cut routes, eventually leaving New York City as their only regular destination. For example, in 1997, the round-trip ticket price from New York to London was $7,995, equivalent to $13,000 in 2021, more than 30 times the cost of the cheapest option to fly this route. The plane was the first major cooperative venture of European countries to design and build an aircraft. On November 29, 1962, Britain and France signed a treaty to share costs and risks in producing it. British Aerospace and the French firm Aerospatial were responsible for the airframe, while Britain's Rolls-Royce developed the jet engines. The original program cost estimate was 70 million euros, or 311 million euros in 2021. The program experienced huge overruns and delays, with the program eventually costing 1.3 billion euros, or 3.4 billion in 2021. It was this extreme cost that became the main factor in the production run being much smaller than anticipated. Later, another factor which affected the viability of all supersonic transport programs was that supersonic flight could be used only on ocean-crossing routes to prevent supersonic disturbance over populated areas. With only seven airframes each being operated by the British and French, the per-unit cost was impossible to recoup. So the French and British governments absorbed the development costs. British Airways and Air France were able to operate Concorde at a profit after purchasing their aircraft from their respective governments at a steep discount in comparison to the program's development and procurement cost. The result was a technological masterpiece, the Delta Wing Concorde, which made its first flight on March 2, 1969. The Concorde had a maximum cruising speed of 2,179 kilometers per hour, or Mach 2, which is twice the speed of sound, allowing the aircraft to reduce the flight time between London and New York to about three hours. Concorde aircraft's signature feature, apart from the wings, is probably its long drooping nose. This innovation allowed the aircraft to be streamlined during the flight but could be dropped lower to give the pilot a good field of vision during takeoff and landing. This interesting design feature made the Concorde airplane and its company instantly popular among media and passengers. The aircraft was used mainly by wealthy passengers who could afford to pay a high price in exchange for the aircraft's speed and luxury service. Between 1976 and 2000, the Concorde continued to service the wealthy traveler and the aircraft fanatic alike until on July 25, 2000, a Concorde en route from Paris to New York suffered engine failure shortly after takeoff, when debris from a burst tire caused a fuel tank to rupture and burst into flames. The aircraft crashed into a small hotel and restaurant. All 109 persons on board, including 100 passengers and 9 crew members, died. Four people on the ground were also found dead. Significant modifications were mandated which cost the airlines $150 million. These safety improvements were completed and tested in early 2001. Its first flight with passengers after the July 2000 accident was on September 11, 2001. That flight landed in New York City just before the first plane hit the World Trade Center. Unfortunately, the premium first-class ticket market collapsed after 9-11, and the airlines were not able to recover their modification costs. Despite its innovations, the Concorde wasn't a monument to efficiency. The Concorde was designed well before the oil price shock of the 1970s, so even though it was a masterpiece in engineering, it was effectively a fuel-to-speed converter. Its high energy consumption simply made it unprofitable in an era of high fuel prices. The Concorde put prestige over efficiency, a principle that was possible in an era where passengers were willing to pay for it.
From a modern business point of view, the whole project should probably have been grounded well before the 1980s. The supersonic Concorde jet made its last commercial passenger flight, traveling at twice the speed of sound from New York City's John F. Kennedy International Airport to London's Heathrow Airport on October 24, 2003. The British Airways jet carried 100 passengers, including actress Joan Collins, model Christy Brinkley, and an Ohio couple who reportedly paid $60,000 on eBay for two tickets. A large crowd of spectators greeted the plane's arrival in London. Since the retirement of the Concorde, the world has gone on to be more connected than ever. Countless commercial and private services have emerged specifically designed to help connect passengers as quickly as possible. Several airlines have ramped up their transatlantic routes, along with new services to emerging economic hubs in the likes of South Africa and India. This has benefited travelers looking for a swift journey while on business or seeing family. Therefore, if the balance is right, supersonic travel could see a comeback. United Airlines has already announced it will purchase 15 Boom Overture supersonic jets for commercial use by 2029, heralding the return of supersonic passenger flights nearly 20 years after the Concorde was decommissioned. If you enjoyed this video, consider subscribing to find out more interesting topics. And as always, thanks for watching.